The outer solar system has always been this mysterious place about which little was known until relatively recently. I remember pondering what mysteries might be out there as a teenaged amateur astronomer decades ago during the time Voyager 2 gave us our first look at Neptune, concluding its grand tour of the outer planets. But what was there beyond Neptune? Back then, little was known for sure about the trans-Neptunian regions of the solar system, other than there was lots of ice out there, and that's where comets originated. But there was also murmurings of other things. At the time, there was a hypothesized second star in the solar system, termed Nemesis, that might have been throwing comets into the inner solar system periodically, causing mass extinctions on Earth. Mysterious as it was, the trans-Neptunian region of the solar system posed a threat to our planet. Today, Nemesis has been ruled out, though the comets are still very much there. But the mysteries of the far outer solar system have only deepened in the intervening years. It turns out that thousands of small worlds orbit the sun beyond Neptune, and most, no doubt, are yet to be discovered. But the behavior of some of these little ice worlds may reveal the existence of something more. There may be proper, full-fledged planets out there too, and one may not even be native to this solar system. The first suspected planet is a newcomer. In a recent paper by Kat Volk and Renu Melhatra of the University of Arizona, links to all papers mentioned in this video in the description below, they detail that most of the outer Kuiper Belt objects known so far have an odd tilt to their orbital angles that would be consistent with the presence of a Mars-sized planet tugging on them. If present, this planet is expected to be orbiting about 60 AU from the Sun. Little else is known about this potential planet, if it even exists. If it does, and another explanation for this tilting isn't found, perhaps this planet might be a kind of super Pluto, a world of ice and rock. We shall have to wait and see. Unfortunately, it may be extraordinarily hard to pinpoint and verify that Planet 10 is actually there, at least for now. It has been suggested that one reason we may not have noticed this planet visually is that it might sit against the backdrop of the Milky Way, and seeing a tiny, very dim, pinpoint moving object against that swath of stars would be difficult, but that's soon to change. The upcoming Large Synoptic Survey Telescope, or LSST, is set for first science light in 2021 and full operations in 2022. This telescope has a very wide field of view and is designed to take full, all available sky pictures once every few days as an ongoing sky survey. This will make it uniquely suited to catch the movement of such a planet, and indeed is expected to discover tens of thousands of more Kuiper Belt objects. As an aside, I'm particularly looking forward to this telescope, perhaps even as much as I'm looking forward to the James Webb Space Telescope. The reason is that much of astronomy is done in a focused manner. You look at an object and study it. But when you look at many objects at once, such as with the Kepler spacecraft, that's where the serendipitous odd discoveries like Tabby Star are made. The LSST is particularly suited for these kinds of unexpected discoveries. The second planet to discuss is Planet 9. I made a video nine months ago detailing this story, so won't repeat all of that content here, but that story continues. There is mounting, indirect evidence of the existence of this planet. A growing tally of trans-Neptunian objects show odd orbits that are difficult to explain. In addition to that, other objects, such as Sedna, seem to have been detached from the Kuiper Belt through gravitational interaction with something big. There are several theories to explain that, including the solar system having passed near to another star in the distant past. But the best explanation, at least right now, is that there is a planet in a highly elliptical orbit of the Sun extremely far out, as far as 1200 AU, though due to the elliptical orbit it may come as close as 200 AU during part of its orbit, which is believed would have a period of between 10 and 20,000 years. There are some hypotheses that offer alternate explanations for the odd warping of the orbits of the objects, but there's more indirect evidence for Planet 9. There is somewhat of a mystery regarding the solar system that another planet might finally explain. The Sun's axis is tilted from the orbital plane of the larger planets of the solar system, and there has been no ready explanation for how that happened. Planet 9 may help clear that up. 
Also, and this is less sure, the Cassini spacecraft found that something may be perturbing Saturn, which again would point to another planet tugging on it. In fact, this led to a likelihood that Planet 9 is currently located somewhere near the constellation Cetus, and that's where astronomers should be looking. But this Saturnian perturbation is disputed. It may not exist at all. But in a paper by Matthew Holman and Matthew Payne, they found that Pluto, too, may be affected gravitationally by Planet 9. More, Erez Michaeli and Avi Loeb have suggested that Planet 9 might also be affecting the Oort cloud. If it exists, this planet would have to be big to have the apparent effects that it does, but not huge. The presence of anything as big as, say, Jupiter is ruled out, but one the size of Neptune is not. Something that size would definitely be defined as a proper major planet because it would have the mass to have cleared out its neighborhood of debris since its formation. It could be another ice giant like Uranus or Neptune, or it might be a super-Earth or even the core of a giant planet that was ejected from the solar system early on, preventing it from becoming another Jupiter or Saturn. But I think the most interesting possibility is that Planet 9, if it exists at all, could have been captured by the Sun from a passing solar system, or early on from one of the stars the Sun formed with. An interesting thought indeed, though it would likely be made of similar stuff to our own planets. There are active searches for Planet 9 going on right now, and if it's really there, it could be found any day now. But once again, the LSST, when it goes live, is likely to find Planet 9 or disprove its existence. And, for all we know, there may be even more large trans-Neptunian planets lurking in the outer reaches of the solar system. It may well be that the old notions of Nemesis knocking comets into the inner solar system might be replaced with questions of whether it's really due to the activities of Planet 9 or another object. And we may need to reclassify our gas and ice giants, not as the outer planets, but the middle ones. Thanks for listening. I am futurist and science fiction author John Michael Godier, currently eyeing the outer solar system suspiciously. It's hiding something. And be sure to check out my books at your favorite online book retailer and subscribe to my channel for regular in-depth explorations into the interesting, weird, and unknown aspects of this amazing universe in which we live.